mating it in the middle of the board and then getting gold coins thrown at our board the crowd goes crazy and we feel like god for a minute very hard to do i'm sure god's job is very difficult but you know we feel like happy god should we say and and um, I've got some amazing games lined up. So made it in the middle. Take of the board, a look at these games, and then look at some gold coins, best kings, thrown at king hearts. The history crowd goes crazy, and, and then if I get like time, I'll finish a with a little bit of blitz. Very hard to do. A little bit I'm of sure fun God's and craziness. Now I have to warn you guys. Um, unfortunately, I'm away the whole of October. I'm playing a tournament for a week and a half. Very strong chess tournament, trying to take out the likes of Maxime and. Uh, mickey adams and people like this so whilst you're watching this i'll be over in the isle of man playing some moves myself so that's why this show is pre-recorded so it will be back and i will be looking it will be live at some point when i get a chance but unfortunately it's pre-recorded today i may even get a chance to join in the chat here if i'm in the isle of man and i finish my game in time so i'll try to join in the chat i'll let you know if i'm about but I won't have all the devices here to, to film this. So it is pre-recorded, but that doesn't mean it can't be a lot of fun. And I want you guys to get involved with yourselves. And if I if I am watching, I might not even let you know so I can see how much you're insulting me. Always good to play that little backdoor viewer when you put those insults in. And um, get involved. I'll post some questions as we go along. And I just want you to enjoy a good fun hour and a half of chess and hopefully you'll learn something as well okay so the theme of this show is the king hunt so i have a nice little picture of a king being hunted there uh, from macbeth and macbeth kills king duncan there nasty old macbeth he was a very very nasty chap i believe but uh, he got his comeuppance in the end and to get in the theme of macbeth I have my normal spicy prop, and that is Yorick here. Now, if you haven't seen Yorick before, this is my friend Yorick. And to quote, quote Hamlet as we start off, we've got to start off a little bit of craziness. I have to do a little bit of quotation. Let me see. Oh, poor Yorick. I used to know him, Horatio, a very funny guy, and with an excellent imagination. He carried me on his back a thousand times, and now how terrible this is him. It makes my stomach turn, not as much as if I drink this. I don't know how many times I kissed the lips that used to be right here. Where are your jokes now? Your pranks? Your songs? Okay, let's start off like that. I apologise for my wackiness, but you know. I'm here to have fun as well. Okay, so let's dive into a nice king hunt from the old days. And this is between a chap called, as we can see, Matt Siegel, sounds like a footballer from South America, against Falk Beer. Now, I like the second syllable of that, beer. But anyway, Falk Beer. And Falk Beer, there was a famous gambit named after him in the King's Gambit called the Falk Beer Counter Gambit. And this game, we're gonna start with a King's Gambit. Woo, we love the King's Gambit. Say cheer if you love the King's Gambit. And the King's Gambit is, of course, the most romantic of openings. If you haven't played the King's Gambit once in your life as a chess player, you have not lived. Where have you been? Where have you been? Give it a go. It's a lot of fun. And the Falk Beer Counter Gambit is in this position where Black does not take on F4, which is actually what Falk Beer did in this game. Instead, Black counterattacks with D5. This is a very... If you, if you don't know how to face a King's Gambit, I, I think this is a very good way to play if you want something a little bit safer. But we're not, we're not interested in that. We're going to dive in to the King's Gambit. Accept it. And now... There are two ways to play this, the King's Gambit. You can either move with Knight to C F3, which is the old way of playing. And I'd say the modern way of playing is with Bishop to C4. Now, if you want to have a deeper look at this opening, I've done a video series on it for premium viewers, which I guess most of you guys are. So if you go to the chess.com video library, you will be able to find 
my series on the King's Gambit, teaching you how to play this fun opening. And then you can be romantic yourselves. Okay, so the game continued. Knight to F3. G5. And this is one of the most critical ways of playing. And now H4. There are a lot of other ways to play this position. For example, I've actually suggested the line D4, G4, Bishop C4 here giving up your knight on f3 to get a quick attack this is very interesting but in the game white did not play d4 he struck out with old harry the h pawn so he played h4 and now mr Falkbeer, maybe after having a couple of beers continue with g4 the white knight threw itself into the position with knight to e5 and we already have very unique unique and interesting position here where both kings are in some danger and that is one of the great things about the king's gambit so you, you get some great attacking chess and here knight to f6 play black to size develop and now knight to c3 i don't really trust this move knight to c3 i don't think this is the best move now d6 was played and the problem is now this knight on e5 has to hop again and we can't take on g4 now because black has two pieces defending that pawn. And a rule in the opening. So I'm going to give you little tidbits as I go along. Hopefully you can suck some of the information in that I'm trying to give you. Is You shouldn't really move the same piece many times in the opening. This is a basic development rule. Try to avoid moving the same piece a lot of times. And here the white knight has to move again and it moves to the wrong area of the board it moves over to the queen side and that's not where the action is happening so try to avoid this black now plays bishop to e7 and he's now lining up for some action against poor old ari poor old ari the h pawn so white takes the center d4 and now black plays a good move knight to h5 and there's a very juicy square on g3 for the knight. And also bishop takes h4. Hello, Harry, is lined up. So what does white do? Well, here the king hunt starts. Bishop to e2. Goodbye, Harry. Bishop takes h4, check. And the problem that white has now is that if king f1, knight to g3 is very dangerous. Well, it wins material. So the king goes to d2. Only in the good old days would you see chess like this. A queen to g5, bringing more firepower into the attack and threatening f3. So the king has to move again. King to d3. And now, I think if you saw my show from last week, I had the rule of crash, bang, wallop. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. And it was just wham, bang, crash, bang, kill 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 and the rule i had which we're going to try to use today is if you don't first things you should look at when you're attacking is crash bang wallop moves and if you don't have a crash bang wallop move a knockout blow you should bring reinforcements in so chess is quite an easy game i'm actually getting attacked by a wasp as i do this so if i get stung that could end that could end the show or add to the entertainment i'm not sure yet Ah, okay. Anyway, I think I've got wasp nests here somewhere. But anyway, on 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 with the on with the show. They don't scare me that much. So there's not an immediate breakthrough here. So you need to bring in your reinforcements. So knight to c6, threatening knight to b4, check. White stops this by playing pawn to a3. And now again, there's no immediate win. So black brings his reinforcements in, creates a threat. Bishop to f2 threatening the d4 pawn and white is in all, all sorts of problems this is the kind of position you, you you wake up in cold sweats with if you're white i mean this is just it's all gone horribly wrong and i don't recommend playing the king's gambit like this you know it's not the right way to play obviously so white tries to grab some material with knight to d5 and here the real fun starts. And when you're playing romantic openings, when you're attacking, material should be the least of your concerns. So black now takes on d4. And this gives him in some positions the e5 square for his knight. And this obviously sacrifices material. Knight takes c7 check, king to d8. And here 
maybe white should have grabbed on a8. So another little rule I give you guys is if your position is rubbish anyway, then you may as well grab material. Try to grab as much material as you can, because at least that way, if you somehow survive the onslaught, you're going to be a rook up. Now, I don't like this next move, moving the knight back to d5, because even here, the white king is getting chased around the board. It's like a, it's like a naked streaker in a, in the chess club, and we we don't really want them in the chess club. Well, um, I don't know. It could add, it could add a little bit of entertainment, but you know. It's also quite a weird sight, having a naked streaker in a chess hall. Actually, that could be the challenge, my next challenge, to run around the Singfield Cup. No, 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 sorry. I'm thinking thinking bad ideas. In England, there's this, this thing where people would run on football pitches, cricket pitches with no clothes on. I'm, I don't think I'm going to be the first to try this. Um, okay, um, so here black continues the attack but my, my thing is when you're defending grab as much material as you can anyway white may as well grab the rook because then if he survived the attack he's going to win the ending so that's the first tip under pressure you have to play risky so first question to you guys here is there a crash bang wallop i don't think so here there nearly is but not quite so how do you bring in reinforcements and increase the pressure against white's position and please chat amongst yourselves leave, leave some variations there i'm sorry i'm not here to give you a pat on the back and say well done you found the correct move but i can't because i'm, I'm not actually doing this live this is pre-recorded i'm afraid it won't always be um but in this position we're gonna this i think this show will help you attack because we're going to look at ways to open up your opponent's king increase the pressure so how can you do that here look at this streaking king this king is like the elephant in the room, and how can we how can we attack that elephant? I don't, you know, I like elephants, so I wouldn't actually want to do this in real life. But how do we open up the the streaker? Actually, that sounds wrong, doesn't it? You know what I mean? How do we get to the king? Open up position. When you're attacking the king, you need to open up lines. Well, now f5. Of course, you play f5 because this is going to remove the e4 pawn from the position and bring in more firepower with a move like bishop to f5 check to follow up. So white now took on d6, threatening knight to f7 check in some lines, but of course black gets the first move in. So he takes on e4 with check. And here white only really has two moves because Black is threatening to go queen takes d5. So if knight takes e4, simply queen takes d5. Black is a piece up with um, a strong attack. And we, we really don't like the look of that, do we? So what can white play now? And I'm going to give you another question very soon. Well, if king takes e4 here, then it's simply bad. Remember this g3 square? Black can go knight to g3 check king to d3 and take on d5 again so that only leaves one possibility here oh, i love a good king hunt king to c4 and now we come to the first tricky question and when you're doing this i know you don't have much time um to solve these little puzzles i'm going to be throwing at you but just try to do your best and i'm trying to get your instinctive chess thinking to a better level and this is I'm going to do this by just thinking out loud and looking for the most aggressive move. So here in this position, black can force checkmate with a stunning combination. Every move is a check. Every white reply is forced. So this is something you might be able to work out. So have a little think now. I'll give you a couple of um, seconds or maybe a little bit more and see if you can find the sequence. Now, when you're suggesting moves in the chat, Try to suggest not just one move, but keep going down the line as deeply as you can, because we want to see the whole combination. Um, you know, there's no point just seeing what's close to you. You have to see around the corner in chess as well. So that's not an easy thing to do. But obviously, one of the myths, or not myths about chess, but sometimes myth, because you can get lucky. But we, I mean, if you don't see the whole combination, go with your instinct. But one of the things they say about chess is, oh, chess players are so intelligent, they can see 100 moves ahead. Well, you have to be able to look ahead in chess. And it's a very good teaching rule for a number of things. So what is the correct way to force checkmate here? 
Really, really nice combination. Anyone got it? Anyone got it? Who's going to get a pat on the back from the Ginger GM? Who is? And by the way, I will be looking at the pre-recording of this, so I will keep an eye on who's who's awake and who's asleep here. Well, the pat on the back goes to anyone who found, and this is a long combination, it's an eight-move checkmate. It will get easier. Queen takes d5. Oh, what a beautiful way to start the sequence. So we're combining the queen's sacrifice. White only has one move. King takes d5. And now, of course, every move is a check. So what is the next check? Knight to f6 check. Give yourself an extra pat on the back if you found that. The king retreats to c4. So we bring another piece into the attack with check. Bishop to e6 check. King to b5. Oh, this is just beautiful. And now a6 check. White only has one move. King to a4. But this king is really not going to survive until winter. As they say in the Game of Thrones, winter is coming. So how do we continue the attack? Natural move here. B5 check. White has to take the pawn on B5. Only way to avoid mate. So he tries knight takes B5. Pawn takes B5 check. King takes B5. Now let's pause here and make it a little bit easier. Because of course, if you saw that previous combination all the way through you're either a genius or you're cheating one of the two now in this position this is a bit easier to work out what the checkmate is now i'll give you a bit of time it's white black to play and to checkmate in i believe let me just get this right three moves and every move is a check so i'll give you again five ten seconds and see if anyone can solve this one a little bit easier this one good luck guys so here we go here we go come on come on guys can you get it can you get it remember look for the crash bang wallop moves i'm trying to reinforce this into your brain by if you can't see the win bring the reinforcements in but look for the forcing moves first smash bang you know smash and grab you know all these kind of moves where is it Rook to a5 check, forcing the white king further into no man's land. King takes c6, only move. And now, well, there's probably a couple of ways to checkmate here. I mean, bishop to d7 check looks very close, but after king to this square, do we have checkmate here? Well, yes, we have a very nice checkmate. Oh, this is beautiful. Rook to a7 check. King to b8. And what move is checkmate here? Checkmate in one move. It's a pretty one. How many times in chess do you get a, a chance to checkmate by moving your king? Has anyone ever done that before? Checkmate by moving your king? That's the kind of thing that, like I said before, that's a gravestone checkmate. It's one of those ones you want to put on your gravestone when you're dead. You want to put that position on your gravestone and everyone can come and look at that position and think, oh, isn't that beautiful while you're resting eternally so king to e7 checkmate oh ho, 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 ho. beautiful stuff but there was another checkmate a little bit quicker instead of bishop to d7 should i just point out that after bishop to d7 king to d6 is checkmates in one move here in actually a number of ways you can even now play rook to d5 checkmate or bishop to e5 checkmate or knight to e8 checkmate and there's a wasp on my desk the wasp attack <laughs> okay so that's one way another way the way the game continued bishop to d5 check and this is the quickest way white only has one square king to e6 and now it's checkmate in one move what is the checkmate well there's two ways of doing it here either rook to a oh no rook to a6 doesn't work because the bishop's covering that square much better way is this lovely little move Knight e8 checkmate. And every checkmate we're going to look at today, basically, it's a kind of if you ever played this in one of your games, you'd you'd want to you'd basically wanna you'd wanna like just run around shouting and you'd be so proud of yourself. I wish you could see this wasp pig because now it's crawling over the keyboard. Can I show you that? Look at that. Can you see that wasp? Let me can you see the wasp there? Can you look at that? That that wasp is trying to trying to get in on the act on this show. 
where did that wasp come from? Um, I don't want to kill the wasp, you know, being being a, a Buddhist and all that. Semi-Buddhist, not really a Buddhist, but, you know, we shouldn't kill things. But if I have to press a button, this little guy is making my life incredibly difficult here. But he, maybe he's my friend. Maybe he's coming to see old Yorick. Um, okay, anyway, on to the next game. So let's now look at another amazing combination. And this is an extremely famous game. One of the most famous examples of one side castling. I'm keeping a very cautious eye on the wasp here. And in, in a brilliant manner. So let's see how you get on with this game. And this is between Hoffman um, and Petrov. And this game now was a great win for Black. So let's flip the board. Look at it from the Black side. I may have to move this wasp outside soon. He's coming in. I haven't got any honey, dear boy. I haven't got any honey for you, sir. Um, okay, the game started. E4, E5. And now we had a sensible start to the game. C3, knight to F6. Everything going very normally here. And now D4. And we have this gambit here, e5. I mean, this, when you're learning your openings, you really have to look at the sharpest openings that you might encounter first. So a little bit of advice. If you're learning a new opening, start with all the, the sharp stuff first because, you know, at the end of the day, that's that's the stuff which could kill you before you got out of bed. And, you, you know, when you're playing a game of chess, you want to get in the game. So make sure you've got the sharp stuff covered and then move on to the positional stuff. And now knight to e4 played. Maybe a slightly dubious move. Bishop to d5. And where is the knight going to? Well, it has to go forwards. Knight takes f2 and the king hunt starts. King takes f2. Pawn takes c3 check. Oh, look at this king. King to g3. C takes b2. That pawn is doing it is dreaming of becoming a queen here and fulfilling its destiny, transforming itself into a beautiful queen, ending the fairy tale that the pawn has. I think it's Philidorf who said uh, pawns are the soul of chess, but obviously if they become the queen, that's that's their life lifetime ambition to transform into a queen. Um and okay, bishop takes b2, and now how can we improve this position? So, oh, this wasp is getting near my mouse now. Go away, dear wasp. Okay, so this position, let's go back to the crash bang wallet move while I try to save myself from this drunk wasp. Um, so the crash bang wallet move is, if you don't have um, a crash bang wallet, you move on to bringing in reinforcements. So you're black here. You've sacked a piece. Your opponent's king is a little bit bare. Can you crash bang wallop here? If you can't see a way to crash bang wallop, reinforcements are needed. So how do you get your reinforcements around in this position? There's not a crash bang wallop, so you need to bring your pieces in towards the white king. So the next move, nice move. Knight to e7. I like this move. The knight wasn't doing anything on c6. And this knight is now coming over to f5 to attack the white king. So nice move. And um, after this, white played knight to g5. And poor little wasp here. Okay, knight to g5. I might even have to pause and put this wasp outside because it's coming up to my wrist now. And um, yeah, okay. So bear with me one second, everyone, please. Um, I'm dodging my mouse and the wasp, okay. Uh, knight to g5. I'm going to play a couple more moves here. Knight takes d5 played. And now white tries to start a counter-sacrifice with knight takes f7. But here, quite one of the most astonishing moves in the history of chess. And it looks like white has got things under control now. Because, of course, if black takes on f7, he's going to run into queen takes d5 check and then queen takes c5. And of course, in that position, black's in all sorts of problems. So we cannot allow that to happen. So while I leave you with this position, I'm just going to try to move my, my friendly wasp outside the room. So it's black to play here. Discuss amongst yourselves, how can you how can you improve? Is, is there a crash bang wallop? If not, in the bizarrest of ways, how can you increase 
the pressure in this position. And now, while you think about this position, I'm going to attempt to move our waspy here out, out of the window so it can have a better life and so I'm not freaked out for the rest of this hour and a half. Um, so have a think about that position while I do some wasp manoeuvring. Uh, if I get stung, then the show may be over. Okay, so, good luck, guys. Um, it's a good thing I'm wearing uh, uh, trousers today because... I often don't wear trousers. Oh no, oh no, you're getting your stinger out. Calm down, boy. I often don't wear trousers when I'm doing this, which would be a horrible. Whoa, whoa. Come on, come on, it's okay. So, um, have a think about this position. I bet you've never seen this in chess commentary before. Um, a wasp coming in to ruin the show. There is the wasp. Can you see little waspy there? Okay, there you go. Oh no, 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 no. Cling on, cling on. And, okay, there you go, off you go, there you go, go and fly away. Ooh, okay, so that doesn't happen every day in, uh, you never see that in CNN, you know, will you? Or uh, the news desk, you know, uh, I know Danny Wrench is a lot more professional than this, but what can I do? Okay, so did anyone get the move here? The move was unbelievable, castles, king's sight, and we have another example of black castling in a simply astonishing astonishing way here and now the king hunt continues so what can white do white has two choices to take the queen which he did in the game or to take the knight now if he had taken the knight here then rook takes f7 and now well white has to try to take on c5 here but this is going to end up in checkmate and it should be quite easy to see that it's checkmate in three moves here so i'll give everyone a chance to try to work that one out how do we checkmate in three moves here very easy actually remember look at all checks and captures crash bang wallops queen to g